You don't have the time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, there is the thing, you know, I, there is time actually. The child needs quality time. Uh, if you spend more time with your child, learn to understand about the emotions, the world of a child, what's happening in her heart, in her emotional plane to the, this little daughter, what's happening in her world, why she is saying no for everything, and she will open up. If a parent has no time, the parent has office, then she has to cook the food, and you, you have to do a lot of things, what happens is, um, the child feels, it's a kind of rebelliousness, the child feels, oh, my mother is so busy, she is no time for me. She will start, she will refuse to do small things also, like bathing, like uh, brushing the teeth. It's a kind of uh, act of, uh, you know, rebelliousness. Means uh, they are uh, unconsciously telling that I am not feeling right here. I'm not feeling good what you are doing. Uh, so they are conveying some message to the parents. They are mirroring to the parents about what they need to correct in themselves. I think the priorities need to be set. In the modern times, we, we are so busy, 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 busy bees, you know. We, you need to find time for your child. Very, very important. I tell you, it is such a huge difference it makes for the life of the child. If you can take out some time, wherever your time is uh, getting uh, wasted, that time if you can invest for your child, that makes the whole difference. Most of the times, children, they oppose, they refuse, they reject, they say no, no, no. They do exactly opposite of what parents they say. So the trick here, the key or tip here is to uh, um, understand the child and love the child and open up the child. You open up yourself to the child. They learn so quickly they will um, not uh, oppose anymore. So friends, children are mirrors. They are mirroring to us something that we need to correct ourselves in us. If you force anything, they will do for your sake. They will try to please you, but they will do exactly opposite again after you go back, after you when go to office. Like cats, cat and dogs, their behaviors are a little different. Dogs are very loyal. <laughs> in front of the owners and behind the backs of the owners, they behave in the same way. But the cats, they are very clever. They behave pleasing way in front of the owners. When you are there, whatever you taught them, they will behave. But once the owner goes out of the home, whatever you said no to the cat, they will do exactly that. They will uh, throw all the things out. They will create a mess there in the home. This is exactly how a child behaves, like a cat. It's a rebellious nature. Parents need to correct themselves. Parents need to uh, prioritize certain things. Our priorities have become, you know, like a very, very mechanical lifestyle that we developed. You know, all things time, you know. Child will tell, there's no time, there's no time, we have to rush, your school bus is coming, come on, pack up, pack up, you have to brush, everything in rush, rush, rush. What happens, we're creating such fear in children, fear about time, <laughs> there's no time, you have to rush all the time, jump, jump, uh, they're not relaxed, such a pressure they experience. Uh, we have to prioritize things, you know. Uh, even our school system, all things we developed in such a routine, mechanical, very unconscious ways. It only creates 
like only robots we create out of children not really beautiful uh, amazing beings intelligent they are such intelligent beings it's in our hands if we really create ambience for them they unfold their potential out they bring out the best in them so that's why it's so important the schools that we choose uh, all the things that we speak every word that we utter to a child need to be so aware we need to be so conscious about it every behavior that we are um, you know showing to a child every action of us it it also imprints the minds of the children thank you for this question <laughs> yeah so yeah But I've observed from the time he has started going to school, he has understood that this is mine and I will not give it to anyone or this is yours, so I cannot take it. So how do we handle this situation or is it fine to have such a thing? Initially, all these things are fine. Children, they learn about boundaries. They learn about what belongs to you, what is not belonging to you. Initially, they appear to be very selfish. These are my toys. If anybody touches my toy, they will be very angry. They will not allow anybody to touch. Even sometimes they don't take the other's toys also because they respect. It's very natural. The boundaries are very natural for yeah, children. But, uh, they become uh, aggressive while they are trying to... It's very natural. We should not take it uh, as some behavioral problem. And they, after some time, after toddler's age, because huge energy surge will be there in the toddler's uh, age group, two to four years. And uh, that should not be uh, repressed, suppressed. They will be so much full of energy, but they learn about b uh, boundaries, they learn about uh, emotions, they, they will be very uh, angry, all that. They will exactly do opposite of what parents they say. All these are very natural. We don't need to correct the children. Accept them as they are. If at all any correction is needed to the parents, you know, we need to introspect what kind of things that I imparted, I passed on to my child, which is actually creating this behavior. It appears to be very selfish, but uh, they learn to be selfless. If you observe closely uh, the child, they are the most selfless beings. If somebody, uh, they really from their heart center, they ask, they'll give. Many times I work with children, sometimes when I ask for the chocolate, they don't give. But if I really ask from my heart, okay, I'll give this one chocolate for you. <laughs> they will be accepting that. You know? uh, I, I have seen personally how they respond to what kind of energy you portray. It always, children are like that. Yeah. So, the child is speaking more or what no, more? Something, the la 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 la, mamma, ye dekho, papa, ho, so, no, as a, like a, kuch bhi, but interrupt no, karna. She is saying that when two of them are talking, the child is interrupting constantly. Constantly between mother and father no. or any conversation, <laughs> they are uh, seeking for your attention. Oh, my mother, father spending all the time with each other. Please spend time with me. I'm also important here. I'm also significant. That's the child, uh, you know, unconsciously asking, seeking for that attention, time. And uh, later on, uh, they start respecting the privacy of the parents also. 
the child uh, learns to see that uh, oh, my mother loves my father, my father loves my mother. So um, they, uh, it's okay, that's uh, okay. They also spend time with me. They must see the intimacy of the mother and father. They feel that, yeah, I have very loving parents. They love each other. They're not fighting parents. They're loving parents. So the children, they naturally seek attention. They want lots of love from parents. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right, right, right. Um, so, ending in to that uh, problem, uh, when I say watching serials and movies is not good, you have separate category of movies, you can watch those. Mm. So she goes directly to those elder people and says, these are chatta, don't watch. <laughs> ah, she'll advise them. <laughs> Why are you watching? My mom says all these are chatta. Chatta. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a very big problem to mm. manage uh, the elders when people, uh, children talk. Yeah, children are very authentic, honest beings. They don't hide any information. They bluntly they say that, and uh, such cases where children you you don't have the provision of you know having a separate. Uh, uh, programs for the, the sh to show the children because the elders are already watching some other their interested programs and um, I think except uh, for educating those elders <laughs> we can't do help them because it's so important when families they feel the the children are important then they can actually watch the television program different times when the children are at school or they, they need to prioritize you know they uh, when the children are at home everyone is everyone need to be at actually participate in the yes. that kind of activities play with them and spend time with them it's so important elders mostly grandmothers grandfathers they have tremendous role to play the growth of the children it can be ignored they have so many stories to tell. Grandma has so many stories. Nowadays, all the stories are well, only cartoon, all the time movies, all the time only the serials. That contact with the grandmother, granny telling stories, it really touches the heart of a child. Even parenting, grandparents also need to participate in the parenting. It's so important. Even the elders also, uh, somewhere this modern age, modern times, it has, we have become so mechanical, you know. Even uh, the, everything that uh, the television progress that we watch, newspapers that we read, or activities that we, everything like a routine machine, like, you know, everything is standardized, everything is like a, followed like a machine. We need to change. We need to be attentive towards the needs of a child. And it's better than any movie, better than any serial to spend time with a child. They they are the best entertaining, entertain yes, they every like watching movie together. Ah yeah. <laughs> and they bring out the best in the adults also. Children they have that innate sense of divinity, naturalness. So much of divinity is there uh, in every child. They are very, very, very divine beings. So, if you spend time with adults, they learn so much from children. And uh, naturalness. Adults, they are not natural beings. We have so many restrictions, inhibitions, all that. We lost our authentic nature. Mostly we hide the information. We are, we are people pleasers. They don't people please. Children, they, whatever they feel, they say it in front of the people. <laughs> they are very natural beings. Yeah. Actually, Doctor, milk product leads to sugar in the mom. Right. So, Tanika, the child is done. So, avoid children, correct it. 
did they test about the wheat allergy, gluten allergy? It's better to do that because maybe uh, because you shared about uh, your child has some uh, special needs and uh, she's, she's a special child. Uh, certain cases we need to know from the expert opinion because not all cases of Asperger's or uh, autism uh, there, there no need for any dietary restrictions but check with uh, really an expert it won't aggravate sometimes they need so much of emotional support from the parents they respond so well they mostly develop these things right in the womb state, you know, in the difficult uh, birthing process, all that. I that, yeah, premature. premature baby. So those things, uh, if you approach uh, any kind of uh, uh, senior meditator, they'll be able to help in giving the counseling to reframe that memories reframe the memory of the womb and the birth memory and uh, mostly the children they respond so well because I heard from uh, one psychotherapist and a doctor who was uh, uh, working with the children all the time he whenever there was a difficult labor children infants were kept in the incubators away from the parents for a longer duration they experienced some kind of trauma they have fear, they have certain kind of limitations, like they can develop certain kind of uh, physical uh, disabilities. So that doctor, they, he starts working from the, uh, you know, very few days onwards to the baby. Even a baby may not allow the mother to touch the neck also because so much pain, the doctor patiently will sit with that infant non-verbal communication They'll be, the doctor will be speaking from the heart if uh, I just I am there to understand you and love you you are a divine being I am there just to I feel very good in your presence this doctor is telling in his language but mostly it is coming from his energy I think uh, this should be on ok this is on so what happens is the child will respond. The doctor will also will say, if I, you allow me to touch your neck, please indicate me. Please lift your right hand, your finger, show me the indication. And what happens is highly telepathic, all babies, all children. They are non-verbal signals they give. They, the, I, I seen this video of this doctor, how he works with these uh, special children, difficult labor, all this and they started responding showing and doctor could touch and they allowed the doctor to touch the neck with loving touch and they released the birth trauma he said this is while you are in the birthing process you, you your neck got caught up in the birth canal that's why you experience this you don't need this over you don't it's safe now he created a kind of a beautiful uh, message he transmitted it's safe there's so much love here, life is beautiful, the child starts growing very well. This is what happens. So I think if you consult a, a right, uh, uh, such spiritual approach, you know, holistic doctors, they'll be of tremendous help to this child for you. You know, sometimes certain dietary restrictions are there, but take the opinion of an expert. Yeah, thank you. Right. Uh, and, I don't, uh, and I don't know how to uh, respond to that because I don't want him to become aggressive uh, for just to, you know, protect himself. So I know that he is right, but at the same time, he's not able to have too many friends because the other kids are aggressive according to his temperament. Right. So what approach can I take for that? Okay. Uh, because the child generally uh, they also attract this kind of situations children mostly when they have this victim feeling they carry it to the school 
that victim feeling they either learned behaviors from the mother and father or it could be uh, that they are disrespected not uh, respected as a unique being even that creates a victim energy in a child what happens when they go to school uh, certain children who are a little older and they can bully the children these uh, small children so if this if you can empower this child as a mother you uh, there's a way to do that actually it's called sleep talking when the children they go to sleep to the bed mother can sing a song or tell a story and pass on a message a beautiful message can be given to the child that it's safe he has so much uh, beautiful energy inside and can face any problem and uh, nothing to be worried this kind of messages is is going to go directly into subconscious mind so children they'll be sleeping while you're telling story they may go to sleep but what happens subconscious mind captures everything message you'll find over a period of time after a week or uh, everything changes so the, uh, i also advise this to several parents the same problem it really worked you can try this and it really works thank you yes sir yeah, how do we react to the situations where uh, you know kids uh, they act mature or uh, behave like that should we feel good or should we feel sad you know something is wrong with them and they behaving in such maturity levels uh, um children they try to mimic they're good mimicry artists they try to exactly do like a mother and father you know they follow somebody like a role model or anybody could be any adult they have this kind of uh, they feel good you know they some children they want to grow up so quickly and uh, like they my mother because they understand that a mother has a wonderful role to play in the home she is a decision maker and this daughter wants to be very mature very quickly become like a mother it is very natural for a child they have they try to learn adult behaviors at a very young age but uh, parents need to all the time uh, not to discourage about it not to encourage about it what happens is children they need to enjoy their childhood time those are very very precious moments if you encourage adult behaviors very well done very good you must behave like this adult they will stop being a child they stop being smiley and uh, they don't play with other kids they forget about lot of these uh, natural qualities they had so it's so important uh that uh, let their inner child playful inner spontaneous child creative child be intact in them very alive in them uh is it uh, possible that you know they might have got these things uh, when they were in womb possibility possibility is there uh, my research is that most of the children they carry even the blocks imprints right in the in utero state fetal state in the womb state they just imprinting is done psychological emotional imprinting not only parents they pass on the genetic coding they pass on the emotion mental imprinting and when they are born these imprints they start coming out these behaviors they start coming out uh parents might not be showing these behaviors but children they show it uh so that time we were not aware and in case it had any negative blocks uh, what have you said the parents like give this uh, message or any affirmation will that's, that work out yes that's one thing uh, i'll also share about how to do this you know fetal imprinting it is done in meditation mothers and fathers they can actually uh, declock remove all those imprints there's a refraining uh, of these memories that can be done very very beautifully it's a beautiful process in meditation i'm going to share it all all the parents can do that also
you can actually reframe the own memory it can it will have such beautiful uh, impact on the children yeah yes Yes. So I want to know how I can use it for the betterment of the child's future. Actually, I think the child brought me here today. Ah. So I don't have, I am not yet married. Right. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, guidance, and lot yes. of, lot of interactions happen with the child in the meditation. Wow. So I want to know how I can utilize this for his future. Yes. So uh, all the messages passed on from the spirit world, from the soul, the unborn soul, the soul that's coming to you as your son, you can actually uh, have a dialogue. You invite, welcome that soul and prepare yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And while you invite the soul, uh, don't specify anything. <laughs> Don't say that uh, I want uh, this kind of complexion. No, I accept you as you are. I, I'm very glad if you're born to me. I am fully, I'll be very, you make my life so beautiful. I welcome you as you are. You don't need to be somebody. You just come to me. I'm waiting for you. This is a message as a mother you can pass on. Even when you are uh, in the pregnancy period, you can have this pre-birth communication, communicate with that soul, the fetus. And uh, uh, you can also learn some new skills, whatever the new knowledge that you gather, scriptures, all that will be going into the fetus. Many mothers who learned uh, some new language during a pregnancy period, they, uh, the children, the fetus picks up everything. Later on, the, uh, the child starts learning very quickly, within no time. Within months they pick up that language. As a mother you can pass on this beautiful spiritual knowledge and your meditations, they, they, they learn meditation from you right in the womb. Like a great uh, Abhimanyu, uh, such masters will be born, you know. It's a beautiful spiritual technology available. It's called pre-birth communication. And uh, a soul can be invited, welcomed, and even pregnancy period, you can communicate with the fetus. Recently, uh, what happened is one of the parents, they had the first child, and uh, the child has uh, delayed labor, and uh, the mother has delayed labor, so they had to doctors advise C-section. They did C-section. So the second pregnancy, uh, the mother uh, was a very apprehensive, very fearful. The fetus was initially in a cephalic uh, presentation. It completely turned into a breech presentation after a few months. After six months, suddenly it changed into breech presentation. Breech means it's a complicated labor. We can't expect a normal delivery. Mostly they will advise a C-section only. So what I told, advice I given to the mother and the father is, somewhere mother, they're carrying the fear energy. It affects the uterine contractions. Don't fear anything. Communicate with the fetus. Three birth communication. She did that. She said that you are safe. This world is beautiful. You are, I welcome you with all my heart, with all my love. And after a month's period, the baby changed again into cephalic presentation. She had absolutely normal delivery. It's, it's, that's what happens. Uh, the, when the mother is in high fear, and a lot of fears for the pregnant woman, it creates a disharmonious uterine contractions. It can lead to complicated uh, deliveries, delayed labor, all this. So pre-birth communication of great help and uh, it's also a great spiritual experience. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What if we have missed it? 
Ah, okay. Uh, now, you are, you are not, uh, you are going to teach this to other women. Through them, you are going to experience, you know. One need not be a, a, a mother. For example, I am a man. I don't need to be a woman to experience. But I can see many pregnant women getting benefited. It's also my experience. I see the beauty and the whole. It becomes my experience. It's because it's a oneness field. All things we don't need to experience. Even if you missed out, uh, what best you can offer to your child, you can see now. How you can actually awaken your own self, where you transmit new vibrational energy to your child. That affects your child. If a parent changes, it changes the child. If a parent heals themselves, it also heals the child. That's the equation. An awakened parent will bring out the best uh, potential of the child out. An awakened parent can do that. So friends, the first sutra of every parenting in the parenting principles is every parent must connect to their own inner child energy, inner children. You must know what is the world of a child. Every parent need to know how a child looks at the world. We have forgotten about it. We became adults, big adults. We had developed big egos. We think too much. We don't know the being state. We don't know how to be, you know, simple. Children are very natural, simple, divine beings. So we need to again reawaken that inner child energy in us. Once upon a time we were children. We need to reconnect to that inner child. In all of us there is a child in us. You go, all can look into my eyes, look into myself. Now we can see a little Newton there. A small Newton inside me. Like a little baby Newton. In every one of us that small child is there. So connect to that child in you. You look through those eyes, you will look at the very innocent version of the world. The child has amazing trust. All the trust issues will develop later on only. We don't trust life, we don't trust the universe, we don't trust God. Uh, everything we have doubting Thomas here inside the minds. We build walls around us. All things are later on. But child's energy is absolute trust. And you know, second point is spontaneity. They live in a non-linear world, every child. Child's world is completely filled with mythical, imaginative, and it's a non-linear, curved world. It's not, adults we think in a very linear, this, this, this. For them, it's an entire big world. It's a, the world of them is spontaneous. That's why a child, has no plan and things. They are very spontaneous. You ask a child something, they like, they'll sing there only. They will not plan to sing. Most of the adults, we plan, we, we go on planning, planning, planning. We never manifest in the results. It remains as a plan in the head. Children, they are not planners. They live life. They participate, they're spontaneous beings. We lost it, adults. So, if you connect, reconnect to your inner child inside you, you will have that natural divinity coming back to you. You can understand your child, your daughter, your son. You accept them as they are. Every parent need to accept their children as they are. Because that's how the growth happens. If you don't accept your child as they are, you want some, you place some conditions, you have to be like this in order to receive my love, that's going to be a great stumbling block for them. It creates inadequate feeling in them, low self-esteem. Accept your child as they are. Then you, they will grow so in leaps and bounds. They will not have that no answer coming from them. If you accept them as they are, they will rebel for a week. After that, they will be yes people, yes to life. So, 
Right now, we all close our eyes for a while. We'll do this. We connect to the inner child energy inside us. We just close our eyes for a while. Haiga kandu muskuli. Sukhasan loontu. Sit in a comfortable posture. May close your eyes. And in this meditation, we understand the world of a child. We'll go back in time when we were all little babies, little children. For that, initially empty the mind, just watch the breath. No thought, no mind state, totally relax. At this moment, I would like you to Visualize, picturize the home of your childhood. When you lived as a child in that home, imagine it, remember it, focus your mind on this home where you have lived in that home as a child. It could be any home. You might have changed many homes, but one of the homes very dear, very deeply emotionally connected to you. At this moment, as I count five to one, I would like you to go into that home, revisit that home, and there in that home, by the count of one, you will be meeting your own inner child, when you are a little child. You can sense, you, can, you may feel, you may feel from your heart, your own inner child. Five. Visualize, picturize, imagine your childhood home where you're standing in front of it. Me chinnanati, rojallo me nivasinchina twenty grohamu, nani chakaka drusi karinchandi. Either Nichi Wakati like a petinapuru, near Chakaga, a Chinanati Gruhum Loki Velandi, Mioka Inner Child, Milo under twenty, Pasipapa, Pasibagudu, a Gruhumulo, Nivistan Rosalo, Etla Unaro, a Pasibaguni, Paspapan Miru, Kalogalutaru. Three, go into that childhood home, walk into the home as this wise adult being just open your heart center ni intlo ki padu chakkaga nadustu ni hrudaya chakranni complete ga vichukunetlu chesi meeru oka sandeshanni pambisthunaru aa sandesham entante na inner child ni nenu Intlo, a intlo it in Nilsinchano, a inner child in Nen Kalwali, and a sankal from Chestnaru. You are now intending to meet your inner child in the childhood home. Walk into the front room, look at the color of the walls, furniture, wall paintings, whatever that is there in that home. Your kitchen, your dining hall, your bedrooms. The play area, the time, the play where you used to play a lot of time. Two, while you're going and exploring your childhood home, certain childhood emotions, mem emotional memories, they pop out suddenly, spontaneously. You start remembering the times when you're a little baby, little child, where you're so playful, so innocent, so happy. Very touching moments, very pleasurable, very significant memories. 
they start surfacing. Nee chinnu naati bruhum lo meru. Iyo ka sankal pumto na iyo ka chinnu pasi paapani. Nee chinnu naati rojil lo etla onna no. Aa chinnu pasi paapani pasi baalun nee kalvali. Ani sankal pumto vele na puru. Akarunde bruhum lo unde ani vastubulni. గోడల్ని కలర్స్ని ఫర్నిచర్ని అన్నిటినీ చూడండి అన్ని రూమ్స్లోకి తిరిగి చూడండి ఇట్లా తిరుగుతున్నప్పుడు మీకు మీ చిన్ననాటి మర్చిపోయిన కొన్ని సంఘటనలు బయటకి వస్తాయి చక్కగా మీరు గుర్తు తెచ్చుకుంటారు కొన్ని సంఘటనలు మీరు ఎంతో మధురానుభూతులు ఎంతో హ్యాపీనెస్ ఎంతో స్పాంటేనియస్గా క్రియేటివ్గా ఎంతో చక్కని మధురానుభూతుల్ని అనుభవించినటువంటి ఆ చిన్ననాటి రోజులు ఒకటి వాంద యువర్ ఇన్నర్ చైల్డ్ అపియర్స్ టు యూ ఇన్ ఎ పర్టికులర్ ఏజ్ గ్రూప్ ఇన్ ఎ పర్టికులర్ డ్రెస్ కోడ్ ఇట్ కుడ్ బి ఎనీథింగ్ ఆర్ యూ మే జస్ట్ ఫీల్ మీరు ఇప్పుడు మీ యొక్క పసి బాలుడు పసి పాపని మీరు చక్కగా కలవగలుగుతారు దృశ్య దృశ్యీకరణం కానీ చూడడం కానీ లేకపోతే మీ హృదయ చక్రం నుంచి ఫీల్ కాగలుగుతారు ఒక పర్టికులర్ ఏజ్ గ్రూప్లో కానీ ఒక డ్రెస్ కోడ్ వేసుకుని ఆ ఇన్నర్ ఛాయిల్డ్ మీరు కలవగలుగుతారు చిన్న పసి పాపకి పసి బాలుడికి మీరు మీ హృదయ భాషతో మీరు చెప్పండి నేను నిన్ను కలవడానికి ఈరోజు వచ్చాను నేను నిన్ను చాలా ప్రేమిస్తున్నాను కళ్ళల్లోకి చూస్తూ చక్కగా ఇంకొంచెం దగ్గరకు వెళ్ళండి మీ హృదయం ద్వారా మీ ఫీలింగ్స్ ద్వారా చక్కగా ఆ చిన్న పసి బా బాలుడిని బాలికని చక్కగా హత్తుకోండి హక్ చేసుకోండి నావ్ కమ్యూనికేట్ విత్ దిస్ ఇన్నర్ చైల్డ్ ఆఫ్ యువర్స్ స్పీక్ టు దాట్ ఇన్నర్ చైల్డ్ టెల్ దిస్ ఇన్నర్ చైల్డ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ కమ్ ఫర్ యూ ఐఎమ్ దేర్ ఫర్ యూ ఐఎమ్ కమింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఫ్యూచర్ టైమ్ టు మీట్ యూ ఐ లవ్ యూ exactly the way you are a maayakamaina tvanti kallalloku chustu nishkalmashamaina tvanti aa chinna pilla vaadu chinna pilla pasi paapa yokka hrudayanni meeru ardham cheskuntu aa innocent world loki vellandi aa chinna ఇన్న ఛాయిల్డ్కి మీరు చెప్పండి నేను నీకు ఉన్నాను నీకోసమే ఈరోజు నేను కలవడానికే వచ్చాను ఈ ఛానల్ను నిన్ను నేను సంపూర్ణంగా అర్థం చేసుకున్నాను అనుకు అర్థం చేసుకుంటాను నువ్వు ఇప్పుడు క్షేమం అని చెప్పండి టెల్ దట్ ఇన్ అర్ చైల్డ్ దాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ జస్ట్ కమ్ ఫర్ యూ ఐ అండర్స్టాండ్ యూ I open my heart now. I'm very glad that I could meet you today. Just connect to that very very soft, intuitive, divine, natural, spontaneous inner child's energy. The great qualities, virtues this child has got. all the divine qualities you can from your heart center you can feel them
give a warm hug to this inner child of yours. Expressing your love to this inner child. I am there for you. I love you as you are. You are safe in this world. Tell this child that we are now going to be companions from now on. Always I will be with you. We are teammates from now on. wonderful at this moment let your inner child experience whatever that inner child of you likes the most the beautiful place of nature favorite place of nature could be mountains rivers streams waterfalls any place that the inner child likes most you can take the inner child to that place of nature where the inner child can express herself and himself being natural, smiling, playful, spontaneous, creative, authentic, dancing, singing. Just be playful with your inner child, being their constant companion to this inner child of you. At this moment you can invite, welcome the inner child into your heart. Tell this inner child we are inseparable, we are same. We are inseparable friends from now. At this moment, you can start slowly, slowly coming back. When I count one, two, three, you may slowly open your eyes. You will be carrying a beautiful words as a message from your inner child. It's a positive message that you carry with you. One, two, and three. Whenever you are ready, you may slowly open your eyes. That's wonderful, friends. Very good. If you look through the eyes of the child, the world looks different. It's a beautiful world. To understand your child, you need to step into the shoes of the child. How a child thinks, how a ch child emotes, how a child um, you know, perceives the world. So you need to be like a child to understand the child's energy. And the first pillar is the first pillar. First, the first pillar is the first pillar. 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 The first pillar Manangur Patendra, Manpilal Potendra, Manangur Pali Kurta Mutta Adi Mano conscious the aware I stop Chiali. You have to become aware of what kind of parenting you received as a child. Sometimes unconsciously we repeat the same thing. We this is called acting in, act out, acting, 
act in act out principle whatever that is given to you you give out the same thing now as an adult so second thing uh, it's okay to make mistakes this point manam cheptunnam tappulu cheyadam sahajam prati child nu tappulu chestu tappadadugulu vestu padtu lestu vallu nechukuntaru it's okay to commit mistakes children they develop such guilt and shame తప్పుల్ని ఎలా సరిదిద్దుకోవాలో మనం నేర్పించాం పేరెంట్గా వాటిని రిపీట్ చేయకుండా ఎట్లా సరిదిద్దుకోవాలి హౌ టు కరెక్ట్ అవర్ సెల్స్ ద మిస్టేక్స్ హౌ టు ప్రోగ్రెస్ గిల్ట్ ఫ్రీ లైఫ్ ఈజ్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ గిల్ట్ ఫ్రీ లైఫ్ చైల్డ్ని ఎప్పుడు గిల్ట్లో పెంచకూడదు వాళ్ళని గిల్టీగా చేసి నువ్వు ఇట్లా చేసావు ఇది మిస్టేక్ చేస్తావు ఇది తప్పు చే ఎప్పుడు డిస్కరేజింగ్గా అది చెప్పకూడదు గిల్ట్ ఫ్రీ లైఫ్ గిల్ట్ ఈజ్ సచ్ ఏ ఎమోషన్ వెరీ పెయిన్ఫుల్ ఎమోషన్ ది గెట్ స్టక్ ఇన్ ద పాస్ట్ విత్ గిల్ట్ లెట్ దెమ్ లివ్ సో హ్యాపీలీ యాజ్ అ పేరెంట్ దాట్స్ అవర్ విష్ and it's okay to have problems it's okay to have conflicts parent need to tell this message life is all kinds of experience are there problems bound to come problems will be there as a parent we need to have stable mind peaceful mind courageous mind if your mind is fickle if your mind is very very fearful what we can give to the child buddha says cultivate your mind through awareness if a parent practices awareness mindfulness meditation it's going to be so helpful you have peaceful mind a parent who has a peaceful mind they are going to be the awakened parents meditation chese parents aa eruka tho jeevanam chestuntaru vaaru aa pillalaki chakkaga aa enta peaceful ga jeevinchavachu anedi vaallu nerpistaru adi chaala goppa varam adi you have to be a, uh, with peaceful mind as a parent aware mind and it's essential to tell the truth all the times lying distorts the reality uh, parents they the when they start lying all the time out of fear even sometimes uh, we try to manipulate children through lying we tell i told some examples like to make them eat food we tell lie uh, to make them do certain things we go on lying we give wrong beliefs to them sometimes we tell those things we should stop doing that we create certain kind of inner images is very difficult later on life to remove them one thing is very common i have come across is about ghosts parents they tell that ghost will come if you don't do this you they they get this inner images inside they get stuck the subconscious mind carries so not to manipulate not to control the child instead there is a nurturing discipline nurturing discipline means with so much love and care you can pass on the discipline that's very different kind of parenting if you try to control a child will be spoiled if i don't control now the child will go out of control definitely will push them into out of controls as human beings as unique beings nobody want to be controlled nobody want to be manipulated they are the souls who have come into this plane so they want their respect they want their you to respect their uniqueness so nobody want to be controlled so always possible is always speak the truth like 
smiling kid is scared, sometimes scared of darkness. Right. And he doesn't want to, uh, in the night, when, uh, when he wakes up from sleep, he doesn't want to go to the washroom all alone. Yeah. He wants to be accompanied. Uh, so such fear, we should uh, tell them that nobody is there or be with them. How, how do we handle such fear? So you can actually use certain tools like uh, sleep talking speak to their, um, uh, before they slip into sleep, it, they, these fears are very, very natural. Certain children, children have some natural fears, fear of darkness. It's nothing but a fear of unknown actually, because everything is dark. And second is fear of sound, loud sounds, fear of heights. But parents, they have so much of uh, this pleasures they get by throwing the child into the uh, heights and they want to catch hold. It's very scary for the child. If you look, if you step into the shoes of the child and uh, see, uh, fathers, they want to do that constantly. They put like a ball, they push the child into the air, they'll catch hold of the child. Very scary and loud sounds. They put loud music. It's very scary for them, very fearful. So sounds, darkness, all these are very natural, they go away. Parent can support. Parent can tell them, give them uh, messages which are very supportive for them. Like you mentioned about uh, we have never done that with our child. Yeah. But now, at the age of three, he asked us to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do it. When a child asks, it's okay. <laughs> but I experienced it. This many times, I was really so scared in the childhood. So we, we need to be very, very aware that uh, children, uh, we sometimes, we uh, try to derive some kind of uh, happiness from teaching them some behaviors. When neighbors they come, when the visitors come to the home, we make them sing a song. They don't want to sing a song, but you have to stand and sing a song. <laughs> they don't like it. It's like uh, they have to please you. They know that they will learn that if I don't please my mother, I will not be appreciated. They will be very unhappy. They will show it through their behaviors. Mother will be very serious. Mother will be angry. So child uh, naturalness is gone, you know. And uh, they, they, you are also teaching them to be hypocrites. You teach them you behave this way. When visitors come, you have to behave differently. As if no problem is there. So children, the, the parents need to be very aware of these things. I have one more Yeah. Like, um, I, we observe that when my kid is in a crowded area where there are so many people, he is not comfortable, he gets irritated. So shall we avoid such situations or...? Actually, all children, they avoid crowds. They don't like malls and all these yeah. places. We make them actually, we train them to like all these things. They like, they don't like this kind of crowds, you know. Yes. They like uh, respecting the space and they like uh, th th those things. It's very natural, all these fears, they'll go away as the so child starts growing up. Can you taking them to such places or we should avoid such places? Um, when they're comfortable, after five years, eight, that's okay. Because most of the children, when such theaters we go, and there's so much crowds, they, their emotional energy is completely gone. They get drained out. So even, uh, even now, sometimes I experience, if I go to a mall, I get headaches. <laughs> Uh, because so much of uh, this kind of thought forms, so many thought forms around, crowd, everyone in a mad rush, full of desire, craving, I want to buy this, all, all these things, you know. There's no satisfaction in them, there's no, uh, you know, that uh, they, they, all people with so much of thoughts, polluted thoughts, even we experience that in the malls and children, they naturally, they are very natural beings. They like to be in the nature. The same space when it is empty, they are comfortable. The same space when it is crowded, they are not. They don't like it. So uh, when they are comfortable, they, they will ask social parties, for example. They like to be with their friends, you know, birthday parties. 
small, small places, that's, that's okay for them. And how to control the logics of opposite? I mean, literally there are bees, they are never, you know, at one place. Uh, so many children have so much energy. They are very, very hyperactive. Uh, don't suppress that energy. Between two years to four years, they can exhibit this kind of behaviors. Yeah. And only in study she's like a good strain, but you talk about anything else, she's like not a good oh, thing. Right. Like we went for a movie, eye movie, and uh, with that makeup and all, it was looking scary. And uh, the, uh, you know, my uh, cousin, she was sitting there, she was talking, my daughter, she was laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> because. And take her out. Mm. She was not scared and looking at all. Yeah. Such children, um, you should not think that they have problem. They have very beautiful energy. You, as a parent, you can redirect that beautiful energy in a very constructive, creative manner. Because such huge energy is there uh, for in the toddler stage, which when it is suppressed, it becomes very, very destructive energy. Creative energy should never be suppressed. In, I heard from the uh, about uh, making the children little, uh, you know, less hyperactive. The doctors they started giving a pill. What is that pill that uh, they uh, make them sleep more drowsy? Even a crash they put and they put, give this uh, uh, kind of medicine. You know, actually, such a, we are making dull children by that, dulling their consciousness, dulling their neuronal cells. So. Uh, it's okay to, if they're natural. Because uh, my tuition teacher asked me, your daughter's very hyperactive. Uh, why don't you just show her some, uh, you know, get some counseling? Because she does not sit in one place and focus. Uh, and she does Actually, society wants all dull robots, you know, children, buddhus, just buddhus, you know, they should not open their mouth. They have to all the time obey. They say, uh, do this. They say, yeah, you, they have to say all the time, yes, yes, yes. When somebody is very active, we can't, but uh, uh, it's natural for them, you know. Accept your daughter, everything as she is, you know? that's the key. And this activeness, you will be rechanneled in a positive manner. When we try to uh, look at her in a very, uh, you know, that she has a problem, all that, Actually, uh, we are imposing a problem, we are creating a new problem for her. If you take to a psychi psychologist, they will tell that there is a problem, they have a diagnosis for it. <laughs> they will try to fix it. You know? and, uh, instead, the children are so beautiful beings, their energy is getting expressed in a way. You have to rechannel that energy. But she is mine, <laughs> <laughs> No, you need, you spend time with your child, you know. They, how to rechannel the energy. So parents, if they spend time with the child, and the, the, that energy will be rechanneled. I'm almost there, because I'm not like mother, as a friend. One day I said, you focus and put your brain on what you're doing. I said, Mommy, I kept my brain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. And she never focuses on anything. Mm. That's my main concern. Yeah. Well, I too had the same problem with my teacher. Yeah. So I, I even offered the tuition teacher's words and taken her to a psychologist. Mm. So what he said is, madam, remove this word hyperactive from your dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> no one is hyperactive. You are not showing enough uh, uh, attention for her energy. True, true. It's your uh, problem, not her. That's problem. the parent problem. <laughs> Parents. Uh, so you is. need to give a lot of time to True, true. Uh, make that energy in the proper way. Yes, exactly. Even my, my mom, mom has suggested my son will notify me. Mama, I'm going to get hyperactive. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, before had. It made me aware so that I had to take care yeah. of Excellent. Good Good children are wise. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. And. The second uh, important sutra is unconditional love. 
పరిమితులు లేని ప్రేమతో పెంచడం అన్కండిషనల్ లవ్ లవ్ హీల్స్ లవ్ ఈజ్ ద వన్ ఇంగ్రీడియంట్ దాట్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ మేడ్ ద ఓల్ యూనివర్స్ ద ఓల్ యూనివర్స్ స్టార్స్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ప్లానెట్స్ బీయింగ్స్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈజ్ మేడ్ ఆఫ్ లవ్ దిస్ ఓల్ యూనివర్స్ కొలాప్సెస్ దెర్ ఇస్ నో లవ్ one simple thing that when people are not loved they become angry very destructive all destructive behaviors in a way is because lack of love if your child is showing certain behaviors know that it is you are not giving enough love people say i love my child but increase the dose if you <laughs> if you there is no still change increase god increase it multiplying the dose that's very important you will see such beautiful shift happening in your child and uh, even unconditional love it clears karmic imprints even right in the womb state if a parent follows spiritual parenting principles in the womb they clear all the karmic samskara sanchit karma they clear it and the the soul completely don't carry the past baggage they drop it because that unconditional love the parent is giving to the the child in the womb state that itself is going to shield there's going to clear everything so if you want to see your child uh, as the most beautiful soul here uh, start from your pregnancy and uh, if you already delivered a baby you have a big child now you can go back to the past and reframe everything you know so give them all the unconditional love never it is too late uh my mother loves me so much uh even now she treats me like a small kid i used to refuse before even she now she wants to feed me for for me for her i am little baby only and never grown up you know she treats me but i understand her love now initially i was judging her love because whatever the interrupted movements of love that happened between me and my mother as a child i judged her children they come to some conclusions judgments at a very younger age so they start rebelling so what happens there's a shift that happened i accepted i understood the my mother's love such a huge shift it makes it brings in a child's life and every child need to be understood or made understood that they are very unique incomparable don't compare the children between siblings between neighbors children and your children they are just unique Sachin Tendulkar is Sachin Tendulkar and Buddha is Buddha and uh, each one is very unique we can't compare each one is born for the unique purpose with their uniqueness never to compare and no no competition needed encourage child to compete with their own self from yesterday to today what am i today what am i going to be tomorrow and uh, is is competition is nothing to do with others is com- competence need to be raised in a child inside their competence they keep growing evolving so it's important that all emotions positive negative are expressed not to discourage child <coughs> to suppress their emotions not to you know suppress their emotional energy at a very younger age is so important parents they allow them to be natural beings 
uh, embrace their emotions, they will not carry any emotional baggage. They know how to express their emotions in a creative, positive manner. Otherwise, later on in life, the child will express these emotions violently. All are none phenomena, you know. Either they express or they don't express at all. If, they, if any expression is coming, it's too much expression. There's a middle path that they learn how to express their emotions, how to express the anger. Right person, right dose, right time, right circumstances, they know exactly. Otherwise, if it is built up inside once, it comes out as a volcanic eruption. And it's natural to want more, this should be encouraged. Children, they, if they like something, they want more. Whether it is sweet, whether it is a toy, whether it is anything, not to suppress, not to discourage. They want to play more. Uh, most of the children, they play with me and they don't want to leave after some time. Their ma mothers and fathers find so much tough time to bring separation between me and the children. They, because they naturally sense my energies, they come to me. Once they come, they, I play with them and they don't want to leave. They say, I will live only with this uncle. You go. <laughs> so, because children, they, whatever they like, they want more of that. It's very natural. And the most precious thing that parents can give their children is time. Ask yourself how much time, quality time I'm spending with my children. Where you are fully engaged, fully present. You are with the heart, soul, completely present with the child. Quality time. Even mother and father also need to spend time. And touch is very essential for the baby. Without touch, the child may survive but can be seriously dysfunctional. Chinna pilla laki, thalli thandru lal ninchi, chakka hath ko avali. Vallu, eppudu ki adhi istaman mata. Vallu thalli thandru lal muddu petku nte, Vallani just dekhe diskani hath ko nte, vallani ki chala ishtu batta, adhi prema vallani ki. Na thalli, na thandri, na anna chala prema ishtu naru. Thalli vagukasari itla nimurut ondi, thalami dochi. It's a very loving, kind act. If a baby has a headache, mother comes and it's a miracle, magic. The headache goes away. The touch of the mother, it's a healing. The touch, don't forget the touch. Children, they need to be touched. Otherwise, they attract wrong touch. Those children who are not touched, they attract very abuse, sexual abuse. They can fall victims to some strangers because they, they want to be touched. So parents, loving presence, touch, hugs needed. Uh, there's a, we say this, we need four hugs a day for survival. We need eight hugs a day for maintenance. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. <laughs> Children need to be hugged, hugged. Many, many hugs. It's the miracle. And Breast milk for mothers uh, who have newborn babies now. Uh, always know that it's the love that mother is sharing with the baby. The high immunoglobulin content in the breast milk, high tryptophan content, which produces serotonin, baby, well beingness. The whole growth of the child is dependent on this. And so some of the things like breastfeeding, carrying the baby all the time, even if you are going for the workplace, not to leave the child at the place, even it can generate some kind of traumatic memory for them, fear in them. 
one of the deepest fears for a child is separation anxiety with their parents with their mother and father um, such children they have later on gastrointestinal disorders their earlier separation from the parents for example nowadays parents they go to america they put the child only in india with their uh, grandparents they they for the child's sake only they will start earning money there but what happens to this child separation anxiety they will be missing the father and mother so much nobody can replace mother and father they may be caretakers but caretakers are caretakers mother is mother mother is so primary very very essential so carrying the baby wherever at least for uh, initial formative years till 8 years is called formative years it forms the complete etheric and uh, astral body to develop that much it much that much time it takes so this formative years it prepares the child for the rest of the uh, entire adult life and being with them when they sleep child wants to sleep with the parents till certain age it's okay to do that they want to in physical proximity with the parents they want to sleep in between the mother and father mostly that is the case so it's okay to do that because they like the touch they like to be you know they feel so safe and uh, active involvement of father we have seen that uh, in families where father is uh, spending time and actively involving the parenthood raising the children best children they uh, because the father's energy is so important it said that um, father uh, teaches the child about how to face the world mother teaches the child how to go in the inner world the emotional world heart soul mother is expert in that father is expert in the outer world both the energies are needed and third one is law of trust trust your child విశ్వసించడం విశ్వాసం ఉండాలి మీ చిన్న బిడ్డ మీద ఏ విశ్వాసం ఉండాలి నా చిన్న మా కొడుకు కూతురు గొప్ప మాస్టరు షీ హ్యాస్ ఆల్ ద పొటెన్షియల్ షీఈస్ అ డివైన్ న్యాచురల్ డివైన్ బీయింగ్ అదే విశ్వసించాలి మనం ఎప్పుడు వాళ్ళని కరెక్ట్ చేయడానికి ట్రై చేస్తుంటాం we try to correct the child we try to say no we try to all the time correcting correcting we are giving the message non verbal message that you are not doing good you are not right do what i say we are giving a different message to the child don't correct your child understand the child they have very creative unique ways of doing things they are they are very brilliant people adults very very linear and love of parents is expressed through their caring and trusting caring and trusting and uh, love teaching by example the fourth sutra of parenting is be an example role model for your child if you want to pass on a, a message to a child you need to follow it be an example stand like an example you you are teaching about fearlessness but if you have tremendous fear you can't pass on that to a child you heard about the story of ramakrishna paramahamsa yeah he has to postpone telling the child not to eat the candies asked the mother to bring her after third week fourth week he said to the daughter that little daughter that stop eating candies from today it's not good for your health she stopped mother asked why you did not tell on the first visit you wasted my time he said i i like candies i like sugar candies 
So if I say stop eating, it's not good for health, I'm not following it. What I'm not following, even if I say, the child will not listen. Parents need to be very careful about whether they are following it or not. Living by being an example, setting an example. And uh, you want children to listen to you, first listen to your child, learn to listen to your child. All the time you only say to a child, you know, where you listen, what is your ideas, your views, your feelings, tell, I'm there, I'm there to listen to you. Active listening, not passive listening. Very actively listen to the child. And law of thought, word and deed. Every word, every thought that we think, every word that we express, every action, behavior that we exhibit with consciousness. Manasa vacha karmena, manasulo alochanlu, vakulo mata satcha vakulu, and cheshtalu. Anni guda consciousness nichi ravali, conscious ka aware ka ondali. It goes as imprints into the mind of a child. If you are speaking with unawareness, your behaviors, all that it can affect the child. For example, I'll give you an example. Mother um, was taking the daughter in the marketplace and uh, Mother met with an accident there. There was a fracture. And somebody said uh, some words unconsciously. Father said some words. Uh, the, because the daughter is very empathizing with the situation, the mother. And the father said, uh, uh, from today, you should not uh, be happy because your mother is suffering. What happened? That word, father said, because the girl is laughing at home, she has, because she is in the her world. But father said, just said, very unconsciously that uh, your mother is uh, having fracture, pain. Don't laugh, don't play, be there with your mother. What happened? Those words embedded in the mind of the child. She stopped being happy. Later on, it formed a belief, if I'm happy, mother will buy a meat accident. She turned and transformed into belief. And uh, she stopped being happy. If I'm happy, accidents will happen. It's imprinted in the, from the childhood. So this is what happens. Unconscious words. It will affect the child. What you're speaking as a parent, be aware. Be careful about what you're speaking. Law of deliberate creation by becoming a choice maker. <coughs> Children need to be told that they have power of choice. Innika ches kodamu. Anedi varlaki undi swecha anedi undi swaya icha. వాళ్ళకిస్తుంది<td>వాళ్ళకిస్తుంది</td> you are not choiceless you have a choice to choose your happiness to choose your lifestyle you can, you have ample choices thank you yeah i know why you given water to me <laughs> to remind me of the time <laughs> non verbal communication <laughs> i'm so late <laughs> to understand it <laughs> Okay, and the five minutes I take. So, uh, the children need to be given this message at a very young age that we are creators of our own reality. Our thoughts create reality. Positive thoughts, positive 
realities negative thoughts negative realities and they have choice choice about the thought they can choose positive thoughts and negative thoughts that at a very young age children need to learn this is one of the spiritual need of a child we learn about creating our reality after we become 40 50 years when we come into some kind of meditation program so we need to give this very younger age they know when they have pain in the body they know how to cure it they know how to heal their bodies and seventh sutra is the law of purpose there is a purpose for life there's a grander purpose for life for everyone's life without purpose there is no creation at all there is a very grand beautiful design in this life there's a beautiful plan divine plan for this life every soul is born for this beautiful purpose mother and father need to tell this no, you are born for such a great purpose you find out you ask sometimes what do you want to do in your life just encourage them to answer they will learn that seed thought is sown in their minds very very important love dharma there is a dharma for everyone jivita laksham untundi చిన్న పిల్లలకు తెలియాలన్నమాట ఇంకోటి ఎనిమిదవది సూత్రం ద్వంద్వ ద్వంద్వాలని తెలుసుకోవడం ద్వంద్వపూరితమైనటువంటి లోకం ద్వంద్వపూరితమైనటువంటి జ జీవితం ద్వంద్వంతో ఉన్నటువంటి జీవితం మీన్స్ లా పులారిటీ అండ్ జువాలిటీ వి బౌన్ టు ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఆల్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ పాజిటివ్ నెగటివ్ సియర్ children need to learn how to embrace both not as a parent don't show only goody goody things you they must also know that world has all all kinds of experience are natural sometimes you get fever don't show only health one day you become very sick when they see you very sick they will they will uh, trust will collapse that day or one day you have seen the father as a very vulnerable uh, uh, also they feel oh today because the children they have a very great uh, uh, place for the parents you know they are like gods god is something happening to them how can god be having pain and fever no because it suddenly collapses in them it's okay for the children to know that there are vulnerable times there are positive negative experiences very natural we can embrace all of them as they are children they embrace dwandwa then they can transcend and love oneness this sutra is so vital and important and teach children uh, about ekatvam the oneness field though we kumurewadu uh, you know ఆ మట్టిని తీసుకుంటాడు మట్టి నుంచే చేస్తాడు కానీ ఎన్నో వివ వైవిధ్యమైనటువంటి ఎన్నో రూపాన్ని క్రియేట్ చేస్తాడు కుమరి వాడు పాటర్ క్యాన్ క్రియేట్ సో మెనీ వెరైటీస్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ క్లే పాట్స్ డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ క్రియేషన్స్ వీ ఆల్ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద సేమ్ సోర్స్ వీ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద సేమ్ వీ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద సేమ్ స్టఫ్ ఎన్ ఎట్ సేమ్ ఎనర్జీ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ వీ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ వాట్ చైల్డ్ నీ టు లర్న్ we we have boundaries we have we say this is my pakistan this is india this is american we divide it we divide even our brother sisters we divide telangana andhra all division 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 children need to learn know that we are all one we have discriminations racial discrimination countries and kula caste everything they need to know that we are all the same there's no difference even the animals plants they also belong to the same energy of god children if they they quick in learning this they have such compassion for creation and the seven the tenth one is meditation and truth dhyanam satyam we we need to 
really pass on these tools to the children at a very younger age. So important this one is. This is such a precious gift that you are giving to your child by introducing meditation to them. They will never forget once they learn, uh, but don't force the child to do meditation. They will not do for the whole life. If you, I have seen many families, uh, certain children in the families, I, I have my cousins, I, I observed this. In their families, they are given homeopathy. All for everything, the child is given homeopathy. Now the children, they hate homeopathy. When they hear homeopathy, they will run away. So, even uh, one family, uh, the children are against uh, spiritual path. Because it's such a torture, parents, they are benefited. They try to push the children, meditate, meditate, push, push, push. Children, they become completely, you know, they don't have fun and they miss all the time. And uh, they stay, they will not meditate. For the sake of uh, parents, they will try to meditate, please them in the childhood, but later on they will not. Instead, introduce meditation as a way of living, as a way of life. Not as a forcibly, but as a beautiful method of how we can enjoy life. Life synonymous with meditation. So, in a way it is introduced, not with force, they will take it. They will learn it. Actually, next tomorrow and day tomorrow we have uh, for children, spirituality for kids. You know, that there we introduce meditation, not, not like a Buddha sitting and watching the breath. They don't, they hate that kind of meditation. Instead, they like playful meditation. I always introduce them to them that let us play. Do you want to play? Many children, yes, I want to. Always they want to play. We'll play a beautiful game. It's called statue game. We are going to introduce meditation to statue game. <laughs> so we say, we, we run and we have to sit down in a place. We have to become like a statue. We have to close our eyes and like a statue. You should not move. You should not open your eyes. For five minutes, you have to, when statue has breathing, you have to watch the breath breathe a little bit. And they will learn. And for five minutes, if they can sit down and quietly, they learn the skill, the art of meditation. They know how to be, you know, composed, calm, tranquil, to still, silent mind. There's a way to introduce meditation. We introduce meditation through creative visualizations, because they have monkey mind, very restless energy, we know how to really ground it. So friends, meditation as a very playful way they can learn and uh, not to force that to children. If parents, they are practitioners of meditation, they watch it, one day they will be curious, they will naturally will be drawn towards this. So that's Wonderful friends, now you have some questions and uh, I'm going to teach you about that process where fetal imprinting can be cleared. First we'll take some questions from this, whatever that you have. Yeah, yeah. Any questions uh, so far? Yes, sir. yes. 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 Okay, uh, single parenting, single parent, uh, good enough. One parent also can really give the best. If uh, uh, you have you are a one parent, sometimes we feel handicapped. You have to play dual roles, but. For example, you too much time is occupied with so many other activities like you have to be the breadwinner, to take care of the home, cooking, everything. So, quality time, that's more important. The child understands everything in a very natural way. It's, it will not incapacitate or handicap the child. But will they not get affected when they see other children? They will ask. 
they'll come and ask the parent, you know, at the time you tell honestly what happened. So they will understand things. They will, children, they are very natural and understand very quickly. So why I don't have other parent, they may ask question. And uh, you tell the, the answer. Give them the authentic answer. And child accepts it. And uh, one more thing is, uh, most of the parents have a habit of telling their problems to the children. Even all the sad emotions, mother telling to the daughter, what happens is the daughter absorbs that emotional energy. You don't need to tell your sad story to your children. You tell them, today I am a little bit uh, emotionally, I'm, I need to balance out something. Please give me some time, my dear daughter. You can tell that. But you don't need to tell all that emotion. What happens is, most of the children, they become the mother to the mother. Like uh, they, they become the grown up, suddenly the grown up woman and she is like, mother is like a little kid crying in front of the daughter. And uh, that's not good. I have seen it is going to have affect the whole life of this child. Not, it's called parentification. A child may be parentified at a very younger age. If parents, they start telling to the, all the troubles to the children, and you must tell that these are my challenges. You don't need to worry. You enjoy your, your, your children. You enjoy your childhood. We know how to face these challenges in life. These problems are mine. It's not yours. I will take care of them. You must reassure the child. They will not take that. Otherwise, if they see mother crying or father constantly uh, worrying, it affects the child's growth. Friends? Some questions? Yeah, you want to ask? You can, yeah. Um, I hope most of the questions are already answered in today's talk. And uh, there are three uh, questions which are asked in many forms. Right, the forms okay. That we have uh, most often asked questions. One of them is the one uh, Mom has asked just now single parent, how to yes. handle. That is already answered. Yeah. The other one is uh, how to handle the anger without showing it on children. That is asked by almost 10 people. How to rear the child without anger? Yeah. How, to uh, how to handle the parents' anger, anger without showing it on the children. On the children. So, first is uh, every parent need to know that this destructive emotion of anger when it is shown on children, it's going to ruin the life of the child. You are getting angry on your husband. You show all that anger on your child. It's a habit of many mothers because it's helplessness, frustration. They go and if they're frustrated, they go and beat the child because the child will irritate the parents, something they do. And immediately we hit the child. We express it on children. It's very, very... Uh, bad because it's going to ruin the life of the child. Parents need to work on their issue of anger. How to transform anger into peace. Most of the times this anger energy is coming because of their own lack of love. The attention that they are not getting from their husbands, women are getting angry, or some way something about lack of attention, lack of love, that's creating anger. So they need to work on that. Some of the tools are like spiritual tools we have. How to actually not to express it on the children, instead play sports. All that anger, express cricket bat and take, hit the ball. And those sports people, they constantly, they're free from all that anger or have a punch bag in the home and lock the doors. Whenever you are angry, don't hit anybody. 
hit that punch bag till you completely done with that anger you may be angry at situation you are angry at god you are angry at many things never to express it on children even the tone of your voice they can sense it is very very destructive emotion anger never helps peace helps love helps compassion helps kindness helps only certain times you need to show you or pretend your anger for the children to only certain incidents for example child is too adventurous want to jump from height the two young child because they have seen uh, hanuman program bal hanuman <laughs> they become a spider man so they want to do that then you have to pretend anger little bit only pretension of anger is okay but not the real anger and hitting the children so mostly our own frustration our own issues we express it on children because children they have amazing energy what is happening in this dynamics is most of the adults parents they grab the energy of the child emotional energy of the child by doing that they become vampires energy vampires they do it what is happening etheric body if you observe a meditator with a open third eye they can see it aura they intimidate they go and pounce on the child go on hitting the, what's happening is uh, they grab the energy of the child feels very weak very tired very very drained out they go into deep uh, victimhood all that so in that act parent is gaining some kind of beautiful energy anger energy you no know? fully etheric body saturated with energy but it's not going to help that energy will go away how long you go on uh, taking energy from your child most of the parents they do weak parents they go on hitting the children weak very weak parents strong parents they are compassionate parents parents who are very weak they get tired all that they go uh, uh, ch children are very very mischievous is very naughty they are like children they are like krishnas they are like baby krishna krishna can he is naughty krishna is naughty children are very naughty accept them but many parents because of their uh, lack of energy they grab the energy of the children so instead the parent need to learn meditation access the higher source of energy when you meditate cosmic energy you can take uh, thousands thousands millions of units of cosmic energy which can be downloaded into you instead of stealing energy from our children it can be downloaded so it's so easy tools meditation is such a beautiful way and whenever a parent is becoming angry go and meditate for some time you will get some experiences meditation experience you will see some inner visions that like you see your children um wherever they are irritated but you see a different version you know why they are doing that sudden insights will come after a meditation the anger has gone you don't need to even express it on your child you will be so compassionate to your children okay yeah thank you the last question how to help the child when they are in deep problem without getting disturbed as a bear can you repeat this yeah how to help the child when they are in deep problem without getting disturbed as a parent okay so when a child is in the problem how to help the child without getting disturbed as a parent yeah really um uh, is it a, a problem for the parent when a child is in problem if it is disturbing a parent parent need to understand that they need to correct something in them because they have already faced life they have grown through so many challenges in their life they know how problem bound to come and 
there's we we can't run away from problem we have to face them if there's a solution for the problem and if a parent is feeling disturbed that means they need to work on themselves raise their uh, levels of consciousness and uh, they need to empower themselves somewhere many of the children they do get some problems whether it is health problem emotional problems when they becoming teenagers they become smokers they can sometimes go and attract wrong company and go into drug addiction all that if a parent is worried and disturbed you they can't help instead hold the space for them understand the child why the child is having this problem without being disturbed if the parent is getting disturbed we can no way that we can help them instead understand what's happening in the life of the child suddenly you will realize that what happened why this deviation why this problem why health problem uh, recently i had a, a conversation with a, a girl and uh, what happened is after she went through some kind of uh, emotional issue in a relationship the little girl she was uh, uh, around 21 years suddenly she developed a health problem health crisis parents were shaken up everyone in the family shaken up and the girl has to go through surgery she was operated for brain tumor and parents could not know how how to help this girl because they were so disturbed before onset of this illness 6 months 1 year before there's a breakup in the relationship it was very hard for her she was thinking all the time in the mind she was having such stress emotional stress which has which is like a trigger event which has precipitated into health crisis so parent need to understand what's happening in the life the child emotional life what's happening in their life uh, most of the parents they themselves have no time for them no they to understand even to have a dialogue with them every day to spend little time and ask them you know how are you feeling uh, today what is new what what's happening what are you thinking today we we need to have open conversation allow them to express and speak they express it so most of the problems can be they they have spiritual so the beautiful solutions and a big aware parent can provide them and with that support a, a child can come out of that and a parent who is confident they also pass on transmit this confidence yes i can face this problem and come out of it parent need to Uh, transfer this or transmit this kind of confident energy into the child so in this present moments there are so many distractions so many things so many challenges and uh, uh, nowadays so if you watch the news channels you will understand how the youth children like our children they go into teenage period completely bike racing accidents there street fights it seems recent uh, incident in uh, hyderabad uh, uh, is uh, children night time they were hitting you know like uh, boxing child died because of internal injury and hemorrhage the child died there itself all the friends they kept it as a secret they said the child met with an accident but somehow it came out these kind of things you know children they at home they are not peaceful parents are busy they don't have time they don't know how to care they don't ask the children what happens is the child gets distracted children are not giving time they are busy with their friendship peer group yeah they are busy with them they yes. don't want to spend time with parents yeah that's Sometimes true we say if we really say tell them knows which they should they are not supposed to do all those things because this all happened from a very younger age these are all connected events linked events in the childhood parents do don't have time 
what happens is subconscious imprinting is done they always live in the outside of the home always very interested about outside world uh, so and one more thing, the atmosphere yeah. at home and the atmosphere outside is entirely different yes that they are not able to match that true true so if we are teaching them to meditate and all those things the way group if they are not of that type they will tease them they will bully them they won't do all those things yeah that is also a big problem nowadays. Nowadays, but changing now because whatever that uh, environment that would create, environment of uh, unconditional love, safe feeling, freedom, children who are given all these uh, basic ingredients at home, when they go out, they are fully equipped. Even if they are bullied by somebody, tease them, they don't take it personally. They understand if somebody will be very jealous because they are very peaceful being, others are not peaceful, they will be very jealous. They try to express it through wrong behaviors, misbehaviors. So children know, learn, they are equipped with how to handle it, these kind of jealousies, bullying or uh, rejection, all these things. At home the, the entire thing, training happens here with the right parenting, you know. The basic uh, uh, the learning process here from this today's class is everything starts from the home, how we give conscious parenting. These are small things, but it brings big changes in the life of the children. So I think hope all of you uh, could grasp something that I, I shared today. Yeah, and uh, regarding this tool I was mentioning, how to do this, your child has certain difficulties which develop not uh, when the child is in the growth period, when the child is one, zero, two now, but it develops before. When you are pregnant, in the womb state, you have fears, you have thoughts, you have so many depression or sadness and all that. Now that you can see those imprints growing, imprints coming out. The sadness is there, the fear is there, and some certain habits and tendencies developed in the child. So what you can do is, in meditation, it's a beautiful visualization process where you ch see your child, visualize your child in front of you. Okay, we'll do, even though uh, you don't have children, you are still not married, but you can do for your inner child, <laughs> all this, your own uh, inner child. Me chinna pudu me talli garpavlo unde, a cop webs in me remote age. So friends, we close our eyes, it, it's a short process which you can learn and then later on you can do it uh, at home also. So we're going to close our eyes now and bring awareness to your inhalation and exhalation, in breath and out breath. And observe the gaps between the thoughts the space between the thoughts. Thoughts keep coming, disidentify yourself from the thoughts. Just watch the silent spaces. Enlarge them, expand that silent spaces. And relax into that beautiful, relaxed, silent spaces. Visualize, picturize yourself while you are carrying your baby in your womb space. 
Visualize the time. Picturize the time. When you are a child, growing in your room space, and all that apprehensions, fears, all those emotions that you went through while you are going through your pregnancy period, you give, represent it as a dark cloud where the child is with the dark cloud around the fetus with all the emotional clouds which are surrounding the child now as an awakened parent can see the child this dark cloud tell to this child I now realize that I passed on certain of my own fears to you certain imprints to you while I carried you inside the home space just now I realized it I am now choosing to let go of this all these imprints which formed a dark cloud right now visualize, picturize yourself with your hands you are clearing all the dark clouds which are representing this kind of imprints, fears all that which passed on unconsciously to your child Totally remove all the cobwebs, all the dark clouds, disperse it with, with full awareness. Till the child is completely surrounded by only bright light. The light which is symbolically representing love, unconditional love surrounding this child tell this child now I pass on now <coughs> my unconditional love to you I love you exactly the way you are I accept you as you are I'm glad that you are born as a girl, as a boy, whatever the gender of your child is, you can say that, I'm very glad to have you in my life. I accept you the exactly as you are. You are the God's gift to me. You came into my life. I'm very grateful and thank you for this, for choosing me as your mother, as a father, Completely see all these dark clouds completely falling off and only the bright light, brilliant, nice, beautiful, loving cocoon energy safe which is creating a safe cocoon around this child. And now see this child being born from your own space, completely coming out. Even if there is a difficult labor, difficult pregnancy, difficult uh, birthing process, forceps delivery, C-section, whatever it is. Now, see this child completely coming out with complete awareness, free from all the dark clouds. See this child as the beautiful divine child free from all those past fetal imprints. Tell this child that it's safe, this world is safe.
there is a divine intelligence all the time protecting us చిన్న పాపకి బాబుకి మీ తల్లి గర్భంలో ఉన్నప్పుడు మీ నుంచి వెళ్ళిన భయాలన్నిటినీ కూడా కంప్లీట్గా మీరు వదిలివేస్తూ మీ నుంచి ఆ చిన్న బాబు పాప చుట్టూర ఒక వెలుగుతో కంప్లీట్గా నింపండి నింపి ఆ చిన్న బాబుకి పాపకి చెప్పండి నా జీవితంలో చాలా చక్కని ఆనందమైనటువంటి రోజు నువ్వు నా జీవితంలోకి నువ్వు ప్రవేశించినప్పుడు నువ్వు నాకు పుట్టినప్పుడు చాలా ఆనందపడ్డాను ఐఎమ్ వెరీ గ్లాడ్ ఈ జీవితం చాలా అద్భుతమైన జీవితం ఇది క్షేమకరమైనటువంటి జీవితం ఇక్కడంతా క్షేమమే అని చెప్పండి I take care of you, I care for you, I love you, as you are. And a message for I want me. ఇంకొక టూ మినిట్స్ లాస్ట్ టూ మినిట్స్ స్టే ఫోకస్డ్ సీ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ అండ్ యువర్ చైల్డ్ గ్రోన్ అప్ నౌ టు దిస్ ఏజ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఏజ్ యువర్ చైల్డ్ ఈజ్ విత్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ లవింగ్ సేఫ్